Welcome to Rock and Roll Flashback with your hosts, Jumpin' John McDermott and Bill Price. Hello there, and welcome to Rock and Roll Flashback. I'm Jumpin' John McDermott, and we'll be looking back at some of rock and roll's greatest artists, songs, and stories. Today's podcast, Brian Wilson Part 1, will focus on the early career highlights and influence of Brian Wilson. Brian Douglas Wilson was born on June 20, 1942, in Inglewood, California. He has become a talented musician, singer, songwriter, and record producer who co-founded the Beach Boys. Some have said that Brian is a musical genius. Well, without doubt, he possesses an extraordinary musical aptitude, and his innovative songwriting and recording techniques are legendary. Brian is certainly one of the most significant songwriters of the 20th century. His best-known work is distinguished for its high production values, complex harmonies, intricate orchestrations, layered vocals, and introspective themes. Brian's early musical influences were George Gershwin, The Four Freshmen, Phil Spector, and Burt Bacharach. In 1961, he began his professional career as a member of the Beach Boys, serving as the band's songwriter, producer, co-lead vocalist, bassist, keyboardist, and unofficial leader. After signing a seven-year contract with Capitol Records in 1962, Brian became the first pop artist credited for writing, arranging, producing, and performing his own material. He also produced other acts, most notably The Honeys, who included his future wife Marilyn Ravel, and American Spring. Here's how it all started. Brian, along with his brothers Carl and Dennis, his cousin Mike Love, and their friend Al Jardine first appeared as a music group in the autumn of 1961, initially under the name The Pendle Tones and later as the Beach Boys. Al Jardine didn't think the band would amount to much, so he briefly left the Beach Boys in 1962, being replaced by David Marks. With encouragement from Dennis to write a song about the Southern California surfing craze, Brian and Mike Love created the song Surfin'. The Wilson brothers' father, Murray Wilson, proclaimed himself the group's manager and the band started to rehearse. In April 1962, the band went to United Western Recorders in Hollywood and recorded Surfin' Safari and 409. These songs convinced Capitol Records to release the demos as a single, and they became a double-sided national hit, peaking at number 14. In August 1962, recording sessions for the Beach Boys' first album, Surfin' Safari took place in the basement studios of Capitol's Tower Building. However, the large basement rooms were built to record big orchestras and not rock groups. At Brian's insistence, Capitol agreed to let the Beach Boys pay for their own outside recording sessions, to which Capitol would own all of the rights. During the taping of their first LP, Brian was unofficially permitted to lead the production effort. Brian would go on to say, and I quote, I've always felt I was a behind-the-scenes man rather than an entertainer. In early 1963, Brian produced the Beach Boys' second album, Surfin' USA. On a personal note, that was the first album that young John McDermott purchased. To focus his efforts on writing and recording, he limited his public appearances with the group to television gigs and local shows. David Marks acted as Brian's substitute on vocals, and Al Jardine returned to the band to replace Brian on bass. Capitol released the Beach Boys' first top 10 single, Surfing the USA, in March 1963. The single peaked at number three on the Billboard charts. By July, the Surfin' USA album reached number two on the U.S. album charts, probably thanks to my purchase. 
This began the Beach Boys' long run of highly successful recording efforts at Western Studios. The band was now a big-time recording and touring band. By October 8, uh, 1963, David Marks had left the band over financial and managerial disagreements with Murray Wilson. Brian was forced to rejoin the touring lineup upon Marx's departure. Brian also worked with non-capital acts. In the early 1960s, he was writing songs with Gary Usher, Roger Christian, and Bob Norberg. The first uncredited record that Brian produced outside of the Beach Boys was Rachel and the Revolver's song, The Revolution, R-E-V-O hyphen L-U-T-I-O-N. That was written with Usher and issued by Dot Records in September 1962. The first record that had the label produced by Brian Wilson was The Surfer Moon by Bob and Sherry on Safari Records. In 1962, Brian offered Jan and Dean an incomplete version of the song Surf City. While the Surfing USA album was climbing the charts, on July 20th, 1963, Jan and Dean's Surf City on rival Liberty Records hit number one in the U.S. charts. Brian was credited as, as co-writer with Jan Berry, and it was his first composition to reach the top of the U.S. charts. The resulting success pleased Brian, but angered both Murray and Capitol Records. Towards the end of 1963, Wilson formed a production company, Brian Wilson Productions, with an office on Sunset Boulevard and a music publishing company, Ocean Music, for songs he wrote for other artists. In 1963 alone, Brian had written, arranged, produced, or performed on at least 42 non-Beach Boy songs. Brian was for the first time officially credited as the Beach Boys producer on the album Surfer Girl, recorded in June and July 1963 and released that September. This LP reached number seven on the U.S. charts. He also produced the Beach Boys' fourth album, Little Deuce Coop, which was released in October 1963, only three weeks after the Surfer Girl LP. In 1964, Brian continued to write and produce for the group. The Beach Boys studio output for that year included the albums Shut Down Volume 2 in March, All Summer Long in June, and the Beach Boys Christmas album in November. The opening track from All Summer Long was I Get Around. It became the Beach Boys' first U.S. number one single on July 4, 1964. The B-side, Don't Worry Baby, was cited by Brian in a 1970 interview as, and I quote, probably the best work we've done. Throughout that year, Brian had relented to participate in worldwide concert tours with the Beach Boys. However, on December 23, 1964, Brian suffered a nervous breakdown on a flight from L.A. to Houston. He ceased concert touring. Glenn Campbell replaced Brian for concert tours from December 1964 through March of 1965. Campbell was then replaced by Bruce Johnston in April 1965. Two other significant events took place in 1964. The Beach Boys dropped Murray Wilson as their manager in 1964, but Murray continued to publish the band's music until 1969. Also, on December 7, 1964, Brian impulsively married Marilyn Ravel. Supposedly, during his first acid trip, Brian created the melody for the band's next single, California Girls. He later described the instrumental tracking for the song, held on April 6, 1965, as my favorite session, and the opening orchestral section as, and I quote, the greatest piece of music that I've ever written, end quote. The song was released in July 1965 and hit number three on the U.S. singles charts. California Girls even prompted Paul McCartney to write his parody 
Beatles tune, Back in the USSR. In December 1965, Brian began writing songs with Tony Asher. This led to the next album, Pet Sounds, which was released in May 1966. Brian produced most of Pet Sounds from January to April 1966 at four Hollywood studios. He used his bandmates on vocals and used the Wrecking Crew session musicians for the backing tracks. Among the album tracks, he later described the song Let's Go Away for a While as the most satisfying piece of music he had made to date. He described I Just Wasn't Made for These Times as an autobiographical song about a guy who is crying because he thought he was too advanced. In 1995, he referred to Caroline No as probably the best I've ever written. Unfortunately, Caroline No only reached number 32 in the U.S. and Pet Sounds peaked at number 10 in the U.S. album charts. For the remainder of 1966, Wilson focused on completing the band's single, Good Vibrations, which became a number one hit in December. Brian also wrote some new songs with session musician Van Dyke Parks for inclusion on Smile, the album planned to follow Pet Sounds. Smile was never finished due in large part to Wilson's worsening mental condition and exhaustion. In 1966, Brian also constructed a personal home studio. As he declined professionally and psychologically in the late 1960s, Brian Wilson's contributions to the Beach Boys diminished and rumors swirled around his lifestyle of seclusion, overeating, and drug abuse. Brian Wilson is widely regarded as one of the most innovative and significant songwriters of the late 20th century. From 1962 to 1979, Wilson wrote or co-wrote more than two dozen U.S. Top 40 hits for the Beach Boys. Eleven of those reached the top ten, including the number ones I Get Around in 1964, Help Me Rhonda in 1965, and Good Vibrations in 1966. Three more that he produced but did not write were the bands Barbara Ann, number two in 1965, Sloop John B., which was number three in 1966, and Rock and Roll Music, which was number five in 1976. Among his other top ten hits, Wilson co-wrote Jan and Dean's Surf City, that first chart-topping surf song that I mentioned earlier, and Jan and Dean's Dead Man's Curve, which was a number eight hit in 1963, and also... He co-wrote the Hondell's Little Honda, which was number nine in 1964. Brian Wilson's accomplishments as a producer helped initiate an era of unprecedented creative autonomy for label-signed acts. The level of creative control that he asserted over his own record output was unprecedented in the music industry. Brian pioneered project recording, where an artist records by himself instead of going into an established studio. He became the first pop artist to direct every phase of an album's production and to be credited for writing, arranging, producing, and performing his own material. Under Brian's creative leadership, the Beach Boys also became major contributors to the development of psychedelic music. His work with the Beach Boys, especially on Pet Sounds, Good Vibrations, and Smile, marked the beginnings of progressive pop, a genre that is distinguished by sophisticated and unorthodox approaches to pop music. This has been Rock and Roll Flashback, a look at the influence and early career highlights of Brian Wilson. Stay tuned for a second podcast, Brian Wilson Part 2. That podcast will review several of the accolades and awards given to Brian Wilson. Part two will also explore Brian's unique and elaborate recording sessions for his hit 1966 tune, Good Vibrations. We will also be doing podcasts on psychedelic music as well. 
so stay tuned. I'm Jumpin' John McDermott. This has been Rock and Roll Flashback. Until next time. Rock on, rock on, rock on, rock on, rock on.